right here where we're at. If any of you uh, are in need of physical healing, if you'll just raise your hand. Uh, we'll do socially distanced healing this morning. The Lord doesn't really care. Uh, he can do it anyway. So if you are in need of physical healing in your body, if you'll just wave at me, just respond in some way. I see those hands over there. Uh, you guys know at the beginning of the year, one of the things the Lord was kicking me lovingly back into was making sure that we go after physical healing. So I want to uh, honor that. I want to stay faithful to that. And I believe that the Lord wants to do that this morning. Um, if you're watching by camera, uh, this is available for you as well. Uh, I want to mention um, Roger Coons is, uh, he's been in the hospital having some issues and different things. And uh, he's got a kidney stone that we need to have dissolve. Uh, it's at a place where they can't really laser it or do some of the normal things that they would be able to do so we just need the lord to supernaturally break that thing up or dissolve it or whatever he wants to do so in addition to everyone else out here we want to uh, pray for roger as well so lord right now i thank you that we are not separated by time and space we are not separated by physical distance lord that you are right there your spirit lives inside of us and you have never left us and you will never forsake us and so i pray for everyone in this room for those that are watching on the camera via the feed, for those that we know about like Roger that are out there and are in need of a physical healing, I pray that your spirit would begin to rise up in their bodies. Lord, that things that need to dissolve and be broken apart would dissolve and be broken apart. For things that need to come back together, we ask that those things would come back together. Lord, that every cell in bodies would function the way that you created it to function. Lord, I ask that chemical levels would be normalized and restored. I ask for places where inflammation has been causing problems to be dissolved. I, I pray that places where uh, even cartilage and uh, just joints that are rubbing and grinding, I pray that you would bring oil into those places that would cause them to function smoothly. I pray that you would actually cause padding to come back into backs where discs have been rubbing against each other. I ask that you would begin to do that with hips and knees and all of the other places where people have seen a wearing away of cartilage that's caused them problems. I pray that you would cause overactive nerves to be desensitized and to restore back to where they're supposed to be. Lord, we thank you that you are our healer. Lord, that you already paid the price for this. This is something that's already been done. We're just looking for the physical manifestation of it on earth as it already has been created in heaven. Lord, I pray that you would make a supernatural exchange with individuals all around this room, people that are watching from their homes. I pray that you would see our worship, our act of worship of handing you the stuff, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the things that we have need of, that if we offer and put our chips in with you, that you make it enough. Lord, for all those that have been experiencing mental torment and anxiety and stress as a result of what's going on around them, I pray that you would cocoon them in a bubble of your presence. Lord, that they wouldn't pay attention to all that other junk. That they would hear your voice above all. That the voice of clarity, the voice of truth would cut through all of the other lies, all of the other torment, all of the other worries, all of the other cares. Lord, we throw those things on you this morning and exchange it for a burden that's easy and a yoke that's light. Lord, may we repent back to a simplistic devotion where if you say it, we just believe it. Or that hidden inside of it is everything. When we hear your word, everything that we need to accomplish that, to fulfill it, to walk it out with you has already been deposited inside of us in seed form. Lord, I pray that you would water seeds that have gone dormant, seeds that have been sleeping for a while. I pray that you would water those things, that you would cause dreams and desires to come alive again. That this season of being disconnected, being separated, would cause us to have the time to leave things that you've wanted us to leave behind and also add things that you're wanting to add to us for the next phase of our journey. Lord, and more than anything, allow unity to come out of all the division. Lord, I get excited when things begin to get stirred up because I know that you have something that the enemy can't even begin to fathom going on. And the more that he does to try to obscure it, the more that I'm confident that you're doing something special among us. 
So I pray that peace that passes understanding would be released to all those that hear, those that are watching, family members, people that have lost jobs, people that don't know what's happening, people that don't know how to navigate this season of life. I pray that your voice would come in so strong and so clear that they would instantly feel at ease. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity to come together to be a part of something that is bigger than ourselves, that we would never lose sight of the fact we're never alone. We always have people that are going in the same direction with us. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how dark it gets, there's always a group of people praying for us, loving us, cheering us on. We love you, Jesus. are hanging out right there i just want to go ahead and have you have, get ready for the offering um we don't take a lot of time here trying to explain why you should give or what percentage you should keep track of or any of that kind of stuff uh we believe that you have the freedom to understand that and experience that and be obedient to the lord's voice so but we do want to give opportunity for you to give this morning if you'd like to make checks out you can make them out to the father's house there's envelopes scattered about uh, that you can fill out. Um, you can also give by a credit card as well if you'd like to, but um, it's so cool to look around the room and see such a diverse group of people. It's fun to see that in all walks of life we're from different scopes, and if we took time to see how many different places we've all come from, the things we've experienced, one thing we would realize is none of us have escaped hardship and trouble not optional, right? It's not optional to just live a fluffy life and end up taking ground. It says, through much tribulation do we inherit the kingdom, and I've tried to find a translation that makes that seem more palatable, but it's hardship either way. But in the midst of it, he's right there, which makes it all worth it. And so even as you give this morning, some of you are in financial challenges, some of you don't know what's coming, and want to be sensitive to that and so we want to agree with you if you want if you need to reach out to us during the week you can call the office you can email you can post on the Facebook page we want to be there with you and in order to really grow as a family you know not only do we champion our testimonies and our successes and all the good things that are happening but we want to have the opportunity to get into the mud and the muck when things go wrong as well and so to me that's if I look back the people that I see that jumped in when I had nothing to really offer them or give them, those are the ones that it was easily to trust. It was easily uh, trusting of that relationship because I didn't have anything to offer, right? And the people that doubled down and jumped in when I didn't have something to trade off of or a way to help them get to the next thing, it was so much easier to trust their motives. And as a family, that's what we want to do for each other. And so everyone, please be like Barbara and come on up. Barbara was the forerunner of that. I love it. No, you were ready. I'm great. I love that. Come on in. The water is good. Come on in. Barbara gets the gold star today. So. transitioning. Miss Layla, if you would come up here, please. She 
he's got an announcement of something that's going on here next week. So here you go, Layla. All right. So I have a little announcement for the ladies in the house. Um, I have just a, a vision to help women heal that have a difficult time taking care of themselves. And so uh, we have an event called Recharge. So I don't know if anybody knows how electricity works. I don't. I don't really care. I do know when I plug my phone into it to recharge, I'm really glad that when I pick my phone back up, it's charged up. So um, the event is called Recharge. It's next Saturday, or well, this coming Saturday, uh, the 20th. So it's Father's Day weekend, but we have a special treat for the ladies. So um, it is from 10 to 2, Saturday the 20th. Um, we have four speakers, so Ms. This is Dr. Gina Baker in the house. She's going to be one of our speakers. And we have um, a lady coming to speak about finances and how that's a part of caring for yourself, your mind, your body, and your relationships. And so um, I just really encourage you to come take, take part of that. Um, there is a charge of $35, includes lunch. But um, if we, we even have a, um, a couple sponsors if people need a scholarship. Anyway. I have vision to see people take some time for themselves so that they can be recharged to give back to their families, to their spouse, to their friends, uh, to their coworkers, and it's just a, a time for you to just plug in, sit, you know, come receive um, some re rejuvenation. Um, so I did put some flyers at the both both doors. See me after if you're interested, and um, I'd love to see you get recharged, re-energized, and um, refueled to live your life. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Miss Layla. Thank you from Lisa as well. All right. Uh, looking forward to our next chapter here. Mark's coming up and preparing. And I uh, want to introduce a friend of ours that uh, he's been with us at the uh, retreat that we've had the last couple of years for two years now. Uh, so happy he was able to make it again this year. And Mark, I'll let you introduce your family after you get up here. But Mark Snyder, you can come on up, man. I've just uh, really enjoyed getting to know Mark over the last year. He showed up. Uh, it's still the power of relationship, you know. Uh, good friend, Todd Martin, who's been with us here at the church, was Mark's friend. And then Todd said, hey, can I bring this other guy named Mark to the retreat last year? And we're like, sure, that's great. They both spell it with the C, so there's a connection there. And um, other way, otherwise known as the right way. And uh, <laughs> we're working on you, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but Mark, uh, and I'm sure they'll get into it a little bit later, but, um, you know, you can, when you first meet someone or spend a couple of days with someone, you kind of get a sense of, man, I wish I had met this person earlier in life, you know what I mean? And that's kind of, that's how I feel with Mark. Um, you know, we have a lot of similarity as far as phase of life and children and just a lot of stuff, but it's from day one, it's been really cool to connect, and we had a chance to uh, be on the winning golf team together, and so that's always enjoyable, you know, when you can win at the same time that you're building a relationship. And so we just had a good time in, and uh, I just want to welcome you here. I'm so thankful that you were able to, to come back this weekend and hang out with us. And with that, I will turn it over to you guys. Well, good morning. How's everyone doing? So good to see worship this morning. How'd y'all like Benjamin up there? Air, not, he wasn't air guitar and he was playing his guitar. Wasn't that awesome? It won't be long that he'll really be playing that guitar, you know. He already plays drums. And uh, every once in a while, the duets will send us a video of him just jamming out on his drum set and he's really good. That would be pretty cool to have like a six-year-old play drums, you know, with us. Oh, of course, we always love it. We have a lot of youth here today, by the way, um, a lot. So I'm so proud of you guys for, thank you, Norm. <laughs> That's, you're raising your hand for Mona, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's all good to see everybody's wonderful faces. And, uh, and like Stephen, thank you also, worship team, for being um, sensitive to the Holy Spirit this morning. It was really good. And as he introduced Mark, I got a chance to know Mark through Todd as well. Todd has a church in Burlington, North Carolina called The River. If you ever get a chance to be in Burlington area, please visit. It's a great church. He's a great pastor, good friend. 
And through that friendship, I got a chance to meet Mark. And then Mark got a chance to meet a lot of guys in the last couple of years. And we've all kind of connected. Um, he shared his heart a little bit when we were at the retreat. And I was like, man, the anointing was on it so strong. When he spoke in the room, it's like everybody in the room listened and uh, because the power of God was on it. And so he's in town with his family. He's with Jess, uh, Kelly, Cadence, and Isaiah. And I'll let you, if you want to share with them, did I get their names right, right? Yeah, well, Callie's our oldest. Callie, not yeah, Kelly, yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. You had that southern draw, I guess, good. on you when you told me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so um, anyway, so it's, it's always good to have people up here. And the reason why we do this tag team thing and we continue this theme is because every time we have an, another way to listen to the gospel, another way to hear truth, you get to hear it two ways. And not everyone can always hear it just one way. So I love it when we share. And usually when we do this now, like Mark, you know, he, he was cool with it. He's like, man, he didn't even ask what we're going to talk about. I love that. I mean, who gets, I mean, think about that. If you were asked to speak in a group of people, wouldn't you want to know what you're going to talk about? Yeah. I don't know. What are we, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> Whatever the Lord wants. I kind of know where we're going, but Anyway, I think that's pretty cool that he has the faith just to step up here today and just say, hey, let's go for it. And uh, so through this process of exploring uh, with the Lord, friendships have become very real to me. Um, relationship is very real. That's why you see these tables. Uh, I really felt like this is uh, something in my heart, and it was in Howie's heart years ago, that we would eventually go to tables. So this really represents family. Circle represents family. Circles represent unity. The earth is round for a reason, right? So the Lord really works in unity. If you want to have the Lord in your life and in your family, do everything you can to get in with the Lord so you can be in unity. He dwells in unity. And that's why I love where we're going as a church family. So through that, these relationships, I had an opportunity to build, Mark being one of them, and continuing to build a great relationship, I believe. Um, we share revelation with one another. We sit down and we'll share what God is showing us. And every time we start talking about the Lord, it's amazing. He actually shows up. It's good stuff, isn't it? And uh, so through this discovery process, um, this week even, um, the Lord was talking to me about the power of relationship and how he really wants to make sure that the church understands what unity looks like. And... Uh, and so this week I was, my son Luke, we started a business. Uh, I asked Luke a question. I said, Luke, do you know if you're going to go to college? He says, I'm not sure. I said, okay, son. I said, well, then you got a couple options. You can be an employer or an employee. Which one sounds better? He said, an employer. So I said, okay, so maybe we should start a business and get you started at a young age so you can see what it's like in your senior year of high school to be an entrepreneur. He liked the idea, and we've been busy ever since. We only can work on Saturdays. And so he's doing screen repair, people's window screens that need to just be replaced or uh, porches that have rips in them. People just can't come out for small jobs anymore, so me and Luke will go out there and just fix someone's screen porch, but he's learning as he goes. Well, I'm telling you this story for a reason because it's the power of relationships. So as I'm building this relationship with my son, on um, Monday we got a phone call from somebody who referred us from Little River. Now, about... Um, Five months ago, in one of the services I was doing, I was sharing about breadcrumbs from God. I was talking about the life that we get to live when he gives us a breadcrumb, and every little breadcrumb he gives me is an aha moment. It's like, this is so good. And what do I mean by that? For so long, I looked for the big miracle. For so long, I thought I had to wait for blind eyes to open and deaf ears. I had to wait for the lame to walk. But during the day, the time I was walking with the Lord, I was being awakened to every little thing he wanted to show me. Little things you can't make up, right? I got a whole story on that with Ellen at her mountain house. I think that's where I was going with that one, actually. But in this one particular time I was sharing, there was this woman in North Myrtle Beach. I got there. She's a black woman. She's an awesome woman of God. I did not know that when I went there. We ended up having church together. And this was about maybe five months ago. Well, on Monday, I get this random phone call that someone referred Luke's, it's called Luke's Screen Repair. I love it. So they referred Luke's Screen Repair to this person. We get the phone call, and I go down there in a little river, and guess who it is? It's the same lady that five months ago I talked about in church. See, God will do whatever he needs to do to get us connected to where we need to be connected if we're willing to listen and do. 
it all came from a heart of a father to see my son succeed. Then all of a sudden we're reconnected. And let me tell you something. This second trip was even more awesome. Because when we went in there, you would think with the political climate, with all the different crazy stuff going on in the world, there would be some kind of tension. It doesn't matter right now. The enemy wants to divide us in race and in culture. But I'm telling you, don't fall prey to it. Jesus is the uniter. The devil is the divider. So we get in there, and she just starts talking about Jesus again. We never mentioned one thing what was going on in the world. And as soon as we mentioned the name of Jesus, the presence of God just, just showed up in there. And we just just shared our hearts with one another and got reconnected. So I know that the Lord is doing something by connecting us, and we don't even know why. When he sends you somewhere, you don't have to have the answer. He's the answer. He's the one in you, and he's the one who would give out whatever seed he feels like he needs to give out. We just have to be obedient to go. So based on that, Mark, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just open up with this. Um, based on the relationships the Lord's been really working on me with, um, I, uh, I was um, at the house and last on Pentecost Sunday, I don't know if y'all remember, and the Lord was showing me something, and Stephen alluded to it too, this morning, that the enemy's a counterfeit. So whatever you see him doing on the earth that looks really big and loud, Jesus is doing something much more powerful and quieter. He's doing something so big in the church and in his people that we don't even have a, really can't even wrap our minds around it. On Pentecost Sunday is the first Sunday when cities were burning. What is Pentecost Sunday? When the fire of God came. I promise you there's a counterfeit. And if we'll look for the Lord, we'll see the truth. And as we start looking towards the Lord and start focusing on him again, you're going to notice that there's no male or female in Christ Jesus. And there certainly isn't any color. There's love, and that's it. And so the finger pointing God wants to stop. What he wants is he just wants us all to begin to love so he can be true justice on the earth again. He's the, govern he's the government resting on, uh, the government's resting on his shoulders. So but what I felt like the Lord wanted me to open up with today and, and just have you jump in with me in a minute is, as we go that way, is I really feel like he wants us all to know, every person in this world, that you can be fully awakened. When I mean fully awakened, I mean fully awakened. I'm talking where there's no room for depression, there's no room for anxiety, even though it can come knocking on your door, it doesn't mean you have to answer it anymore. You can be so awakened in God and so sensitive to the Spirit of God that when you go anywhere or you travel anywhere or you sit anywhere, you just become quickened by the Spirit of God to anything He wants to show you, when He wants to show you, know how minute, macro, or micro it is. That's the God that wants to awaken us. Every cell in my DNA and in my fiber wants Jesus to invade I want even my smallest cells in my body to be able to shout hallelujah and me hear it. That's good. That's the kind of quickening he gave. He said our mortal bodies would be quickened. That's the God that we serve. But we, can, we, gotta, we get to a place where we, we get so awakened that we can be so alive that circumstances only mean more advantageous opportunities for us instead of negative. You're like, where's God in this? This is exciting. This morning when I got up, the birds were chirping. By the time I got to the church, the phones were ringing. And it wasn't good news. It was somebody, you know, up, and J.D. made it in the back. Yeah, his car broke and he had a tire that he had to get fixed. And right after that, I got some more things. The computers weren't working. Things just started falling apart in the natural. But that got me excited in the supernatural because I knew that something bigger has to happen when the natural begins to start mirroring and I was like God you're so good so I'm going to read this one scripture and get us kicked off on this Mark and then uh, if you don't mind maybe you can start sharing your process of awakening when it started with you maybe some of those things that would really help um, all of us as uh, we move forward here all right the first scripture I want to go to this morning is uh I want to go to Proverbs 3, 5. And it's a simple scripture. We, we, we read it all the time. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him 
and he will make straight your paths. The more I awaken in my spirit, the less I depend on my soul. The more my spirit starts getting in union with the Lord, my soulless realm begins to quiet and I begin to start thinking through the spirit where my soulless realm no longer becomes so noisy that I can't hear the spirit. Does this make sense? I lean not upon my own understanding. I come to a place in my life where I begin to live the life in the spirit and that is what maturity looks like as we begin to grow. Now, I'm not talking about spiritual weird stuff where you hear someone always tell you they hear the Lord and they're, they're just not grounded. They don't have any grounding to them. They just have, you know, whatever the Lord says, there's no accountability. I'm not talking about that. True maturity is being in right relationship with the Lord and each other. If you remove one of those out of the equation, I promise you it is not a fair and just balance weight. So as God is growing us together, we begin to realize we need one another. We need to be connected to get to where we need to go. And, uh, and, and then in Romans 8, 1, this is what it, it says. It says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. By the way, this is the Passion Translation. I love the Passion Translation. Verse 2 says this, for the law of the spirit of life following through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by weakness of human nature. Yet God sent his son in human form to identify with the human weakness, clothed with humanity. God's son gave his body to be sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and power of sin. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. And we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue the benefits of themselves, but those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. And that's where I'm at in my life. I want spiritual reality. I do not want to rely upon my carnal mind and my soulish realm to be little G God anymore, have an opinion and make a decision. If I could get to the place to suppose to know nothing till he speaks would be awesome. I mean, that would be awesome. But we cannot subtract love from this equation. It is love that gets us in the door. It is love that's never going to change. And you're never going to convince God that he's not love. No matter what you do, he's not changing who he is just because of what you've done. He is love. So based on those spiritual realities, some of those awakening moments, can you share a little bit, maybe a, a little bit of a testimony of maybe your past or whatever you're feeling right now, just to kind of bring us up to speed where we're at? Absolutely. Good morning, everybody. So my wife and I, Jess, we grew up in Christian homes, um, but very just put it this way, it was very fundamental Baptist, okay? So God, basically, I'm just being real. That's how I have to be, so sure. I hope I don't offend anybody, but to be honest with you, we grew up where basically three-fourths of the Bible isn't for today. So that's fun to hear growing up. You can't wait to live for the Lord then, right? right. Which sure. it's you living for the Lord, not Christ living his life through you. That's right, that's good. See, rest is not you striving to live for the Lord. That'll leave you, con your heart will condemn yourself because you can't do that. It's, good. it's you being surrendered enough for the Lord to live his life through you. Where you become so one with him that you, people look you in the eyes and say, I want to see Jesus. And you can say to him, what do you mean? If you've seen me, you've seen him. That sounds very prideful. Religion will tell you that's prideful. No, that's faith. That's real. Jesus said that, if you've seen me, Philip, you've seen the Father, John 14. Why? Because the Father's in me, and I'm in Him. We are one. That's right. And then in John 17, He prays for us, those that will believe, that we may be one in Him. That's right. And we can try in the natural to work these things out. We'll try to do all these events together and say we're one, yet the whole time our heart could be filled with division. You become one in the Holy Spirit. 
So we grew up um, fundamental Baptist and uh, went to Bible college. That's where I met Jess. Fundamental Baptist Bible College. Literally, the name was Baptist Bible College. And I had had an encounter with the Lord before I went to college. It was my senior year of high school, and into my senior year, I went to a camp in, um, at this college. And I'll be honest with you, I went to the camp um, because I heard there were a lot of girls that go to this camp that are good looking. And there was sports, so I was all in. And there's like 800 teenagers there, and we're all sitting there. And I'm with another church. I went with my cousin in his church because I wasn't really into youth group or any of that stuff, just being completely honest with you. But what's, I didn't understand the, the fake stuff of church because I just didn't care. I'm like, I'm not going to be fake. I went to a public school. If you're fake, you get, you get beat up there. I mean, you literally, it costs you. So I just was like, I want nothing to do with it. So I'm sitting in this service, and there's 800 kids, and I'm towards the back, real insecure, never want to cry. Okay, and again, I'm trying to find, I'll just be honest, I'm looking around to see if girls are staring at me during this thing. <laughs> this guy's up here speaking, and he starts saying stuff, and I'm getting like a little upset. I'm like, he's talking to me. He would even look at me. He was looking me in my eyes, and I was freaking out. And I'm like, my dad called this guy and told him everything I've been doing. And all of a sudden, I feel something inside of me break. I didn't even know what was in there. And my eyes start watering. And I'm like trying to act like it's allergies, you know what I mean? I'm looking to see if anyone's looking at me. And here's what happened. I, this is how I describe it. It was like, imagine a big bucket being poured on you of water, but it's liquid love. Okay? And I lose it. I just start bawling. And my cousin sitting next to me is like my best friend. My other cousin's on the other side. And they're just looking at me like, what is going on? Then they start crying. Okay? We did not do that. Right. And I saw a picture of the Lord on the cross. But for the first time probably in my life, I didn't feel condemned by it. I felt loved through it. And he was showing me in that moment, I didn't die because you're a worthless piece of garbage. I died because you're actually worth something. And I've never lost sight of who you were meant to be. Ever. That's good. And today's the day, buddy. I'm on the ground weeping. That whole night, my cousin and I are 17, 18 years old. We both went for the same reason. And I'm, we, we, the dorms were, they're just kind of rougher dorms. They're not very nice, but you have these little twin beds. I'm on his twin bed. He's holding me as I'm confessing sin to him. Guys, I don't know anything in the Bible. I don't know that James says confess your sins to one another and you will be healed. See, it's not this shame-filled thing. Tell us all your sins. It's literally from a heart of I don't want it anymore. Healing comes. He's holding me like I'm his child. Two 18-year-old guys weeping before the Lord all night. And I've never been the same since then. The problem is, I was all excited, and I went to a, a Bible college, and I got taught religion, and I bought it, man. I was in. And then Cadence is here, so she's amazing now. But when Cadence, our middle child, was born, um, it was nonstop, literally crying nonstop. If you want to know what that's like, pull it up on if YouTube has a video of it and listen to it 24-7. That's what Jess and I's life was like when we had Cadence. So one day, and I'm at a, I'm at a Christian school teaching um, our oldest daughter was amazing. She never cried. And Cadence never didn't cry. I'd go to work, and Jess would just be looking at me like, please, may work go by quick today because this kid's screaming. She would call me during lunch say, can you run home real quick? And I hear Cadence screaming in the background. I just need you to hold her for a little bit and let her scream at you for a little bit. Hey, that's what it was like. So I'm teaching at a Christian school. I'm trying to hold my life together in my own strength. I'm trying to be a, or do Christianity. And I finally just looked at Jess, and I meant this when I said it. Something broke when I said it. I, said, um, I looked at her and I said, listen, if this is all there is to Christianity, I'm done. Just so you know. And I will go do something where I make a ton of money. Because this is, this is awful. And I meant it when I said it. So you know what the Lord does when you finally open your heart? Right. He jumps on it. Yeah. Finally, I can work with him. Yeah. His heart's open. We think, oh my, how could you say that? Yeah. You know what the Lord was saying? I'm done with what you're in too, Mark. I'm not even in it. 
For real. So I made a, I made a, we go to this garage sale and you guys got to understand, we just had zero money, none. And so I'm like, Jess, I'll push Cadence around in the stroll. Cadence, you're amazing, by the way. Okay. Once she hit five months, it was boom. And she was done. And she's called to be a warrior. So that warring spirit was coming up and God used Cadence to catapult Jess and I into uh, where we are today. So I'm at this bookstore, and I'm pushing Cadence around, just trying to get her away from Jess and other people. And I see this book. I don't know if any of you heard of D.L. Moody. Pick up this book, and I'm just going to be honest with you, it looked really boring. Okay? Now, I don't believe, my mind's telling me, Holy Spirit, it, really, Holy Spirit's not even real. That's basically what I believe. And I hear this voice inside of me say, you need to read that book. But I don't believe God speaks to me personally unless it's through the Bible. Okay? Which, well... I won't even go into that, but that's, that'd be, that'd be a bump. What about all the guys that didn't have a Bible that the Bible's written about? I wonder how they did it. It's funny how we don't, you just don't sit back and think, wait a minute, this whole book is a book of encounters, right? That's what the book of Revelation is, by the way. It's a revealing of Christ, and it's a book of an encounter that a man had. We've come up with a lot of things that it's about that can get pretty weird, to be honest with you. That's for a whole nother thing. So I put the book down. I'm like, I'm not reading that. That looks real boring. And this hand gets put on my shoulder. I turn around. It's the guy that's running the bookstore. And it was $2.50. And I'm not lying when I tell you this. In, I'm like, I don't want to spend $2.50 on this because it's, I mean, we were that tight. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, you can have that book for free, man. But then he didn't leave. He just stared at me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I guess I'll take it. So I take this book and I start devouring it. I, it went everywhere with me. And I started to realize really quick, this guy knows God like I don't. And God works through him like he's never worked through me. And then there was a, a chapter in there on his encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I looked at my wife, and my wife's thinking I'm going insane. Because she's seen Mark try. It'll last a week, and then he turns back into a Mark again, the flesh. Which was angry, bitter, hurt, mm -hmm. controlling. Right, babe? She's like, amen, amen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So anyway, uh, I read that. I said, Jess, this is it. This is what we're missing. This is it. Um, and I would tell her stuff like, God's speaking to me. And I would write it down in a notebook. And I'd be like, I think I'm like Isaiah the prophet or something. I feel like I'm a prophet because we never knew God could speak to you. See how I even got religious in that right away, labeling it, right? So anyway... I immediately go from that to this, and I just start devouring it, and <clears throat> I would tell Jess, Jess, did you know this was in here about the Holy Spirit? Did you know this was in here? And the scriptures started coming alive to me through relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then I'll just, we can move on, but I'll just tell you one quick thing. My brother was in a similar journey to me. We both grew up the same, and I'm downstairs in my basement. He's never been in my house. And I'm just reading Abraham, and I'm weeping. Like, I wept for, it was like 45 minutes over my Bible, literally crying. Remember, I never cried, ever. Saying, God, I just need you. I just want to know you. I don't care about knowing about you. I don't want anyone to tell me, but I have to know you. So I'm asking you to speak to me. Speak to me, please. And I was so hungry, nothing could get in my way. I have learned this. Hunger is invaluable in the kingdom of God. Because nothing will stop you when you're truly hungry. So I'm in my basement. Didn't feel like the Lord spoke. Shut my Bible. Went upstairs. My cell phone's ringing on the table as soon as I open the basement door. Answer the phone and it's my brother. And we don't even believe in visions at this point. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. So anyway... I, my phone's ringing. My brother and I don't believe in visions at this point. I answer the phone, and my brother says, Mark, do you have a basement at your house? I said, yeah, I do. And he described the basement to me perfectly. I said, where are you going with this? He said, you got a table down there. You had your bla big black Bible open. And were you saying these things crying before the Lord with your face on your Bible? He goes, Mark, I have no idea what just happened, but I was praying. You came to my mind, and I saw you in your basement. You got to remember, we don't believe in these things. Our minds are going zzz, out of control, right? Coming out of our mind into his is what he's doing. 
And he says, the Lord says, son, I, I, hear every, I hear every word you're saying. I see every tear and I love you. And he chose to use my brother relationship to speak to me in that moment. And so that's the journey that Jess and I have been on. But what I've learned recently since coming out of the Baptist fundamental movement, going into the charismatic movement, and I'm just going to be honest, I don't mean to offend anybody. Guys, the charismatic movement can be just as religious. Yeah, you guys are all in agreement. Sometimes that hits hard. That doesn't sit well. And I started to realize this really isn't working either. I can pray in tongues now, but I don't treat my wife any better. But I'll go pray in tongues in my room for an hour and then come out while she's trying to take care of the kids because I'm doing the spiritual thing in my room. Come out and immediately be filled with anger. All right? And we want to see healing and we want to prophesy and my wife needs me to speak life to her the whole time and I can't do it. And what I'm becoming obsessed with, just to be honest with you, is, guys, I used to not think the power of God was for today. So we went nuts with it. And we've seen supernatural healings in our home where my oldest daughter was in my arms, pretty much lifeless, throwing up every five seconds to being instantly healed running around our house. So we've seen that stuff. But I'm telling you, not that you have to choose, but I would much rather function out of the nature of God. And I don't mean morality. I mean true righteousness. Where my mind is so renewed and the life of Christ is so alive in me that I walk into a room and people feel God. Not so I get noticed anymore. I want to know Him and I want to be so one with Him that I don't have to... I heard Brad, I think he was speaking here or somewhere, Brad McClendon, and he said, we've got to go from following Jesus to become like Jesus. Following Jesus is this. Somebody cuts you off in the road. Oh, I've got to remember, I've got to be loving, got to be loving. Okay, that's trying to follow him. It's good. Becoming like him is you don't even come close to getting angry because love just comes out of you. See the difference? And the enemy's going to try to convince us that what I said, the second thing, isn't possible now. And that's a lie. What a great lie to keep us trapped. You'll never be, you'll never be like him. You're always going to be a failure. Blah, blah, blah. And we boast in those things. Does that make sense? So that, anyway. No, that's, that's good. Um, so f foundationally speaking, if you were at a timeline, and we had a timeline going across our heads right now, everybody has a timeline that they're on. And it's an appointed time. And the Lord will have times on the timeline that he will awaken. He's been trying to get to you the whole time. But on the timeline, somehow we turn to see. And the minute you turn is the moment, the aha moment comes. Everybody know what I mean by the aha moment? When you get delivered and you, truth just spoke to you and set you free. And so on your journey, it sounds like in the beginning, there was still aha moments in the very beginning, even when you were in the fundamental Baptist church, because you were still getting foundational principles. God was teaching you how to work through stuff. And actually, he's still using it because now you can go back and see truth even clearer because of the untruth. And then as you're going through the timeline, so this is, it sounds like to me, so you got to a point where then you got awakened that, oh my God, I can hear God's voice. So there's just this spiritual awakening that happened. But it sounds like to me that's even more than that. So on the next stop, as we're going forward, it sounds like some other stuff has happened after the spiritual awakening. And it sounds like your heart is being awakened and uh, to a place where you're being a real father now to many, not just your family. But it is something had to, what, what happened to get you to this place where you're now more loving? You're not as, uh, you're not as bold or, not bold is a good word, uh, a jerk. Yeah, not as much of a jerk, yep. Okay. I would just say that what was crazy to me is when I started to really want to know God through experience, which is what the word means. Okay, the word in the Bible, no, in the Old Testament, it's yada. Adam knew right. Eve. Total opening up everything to each other and an experiential union of oneness. The most intimate knowing possible. He chooses to use that word for us knowing him. And I started to realize this through revelation of the Holy Spirit. So I started to want to experience Him. And it was crazy because I would expect 
lectures from him. Like, okay, this is how my mind was, man. It was so trained to be negative. Okay, you do speak to me, so I'm ready. Go ahead, give it to me. I'm ready to take it for you, Lord. And I would experience the Lord, and I would go to Jess and be like, Jess, he's actually good. Like, he feels good. If I, I'm just going to be real raw right now. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit by myself in my room, my wife, the Lord said, um, get in your room, lay down, I'm going to come upon you. That's Acts 2, or Acts uh, 1. Wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon you in power. Well, I didn't know this at the time. Jess was standing outside the door, I didn't know it, but I run in, I lay down, I don't, what do you do? I'm going, okay, Lord, I'm ready. You know, how hard is this going to happen? He comes upon me, and I get so drunk in the Spirit, and these groans, Romans 8, Romans 8 talks about groans, these groans are coming out of me. My wife's standing outside the door like, what is going on with my husband in there? I called a friend of mine who was on a similar journey. I said, dude, I don't know if this is demonic. I, and then I'm groaning as I'm talking to him. I started to realize, and then I started, the Holy Spirit just can feel very, very good. And it was love. And what it was is in the middle of a mess, I would feel accepted and loved. Because sometimes we don't even realize it, but subconsciously our relationship with God is actually based on guilt. And we think it's, we call it the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is a convincing. What's he trying to convince you of? Who you really are. He doesn't have to convince you that what you did was wrong. If the Spirit of God's in you, you already know that. It's against your very nature. So I started to experience his goodness. And as I started to behold him, 2 Corinthians 3. I started to be transformed into the same image. So I would just behold him and come out being more like him. And that, that to me, is, it's beholding him. Obviously, the Holy, as you behold him, he renews your mind. It's encounters with him. Um, but it's, it, it's like, it's, it is, it's his love. It's that acceptance in the midst of your mess. I don't know if you've ever been in the middle of a mess that you made that you knew better. And somebody in that moment loved you. And I'm not talking about they told you they loved you, but stay away, you're a mess. I mean, man, I receive you in the mess and you're accepted and you're free. That's what I love about Mark and Stephen and these guys, what they carry. I've known Mark, I met Mark last year and we talked a little bit on the phone, but I hadn't seen him since last year. And then I saw him this year and I've shared deep things with Mark in the car, just me. And it was divine appointment where I would ride with just him and stuff was coming out of me. I didn't even know it was in me and I'd start crying in his car. Not a bit of judgment came out of him, just acceptance and love. That will transform you, yeah. period. And kids that are growing up in homes, those of us that have kids, that's the environment they need. Yeah. And they may manifest stuff that scares us, but what if the Lord's saying, I'm trusting you for them to manifest to you because I know you can be me to them. And when the Lord gets close, what I'm learning is when, I'm talking about the, so there's a word in the Bible for power that means energy. Okay, we, uh, people immediately when they hear me say energy, they go, because of our minds, new age, he's new age. Energy is a real word that's been stolen, but it's, right. it's biblical, it's kingdom. Sure. When the energy of Jesus, the literal person, not an idea of him like Santa Claus, I'm talking about the person, when he gets close, you know, when gold goes through fire, the impurities come to the top. Stuff starts to manifest. But so that you can get free, because in it there's no judgment. I didn't come to condemn the world, but I came that the world might be saved through me. That is Jesus said that. I did not come to condemn the world. In his worst moment as a human being, on the cross, naked, okay, beaten to the point where you can't even recognize him. They're still running their mouths at him. Yeah, looking at him like he, you can't even recognize him as a human being. And they're saying, if you're God, bring yourself down from there. Come on, king of the Jews. They're mocking him. Peter just denied him. None of those guys, John's the only one that's there that we know of in Scripture. Where are they all? They ran. They're terrified. His best friends. His family thinks he's nuts. They don't believe that he is who he says he is. And in that moment, do you know what he says on the cross? This is what I'm talking about, the nature of God. He says, Father, forgive them. 
They don't know what they're doing. In his worst moment, that's what he said. That's who he is. And that is what changes hearts. That's what changes my heart. So that's good. So the, your heart changes because you're having an encounter with the person of Jesus. He's still drawing you. So, so the timeline for all of us is never really going to end till it ends, right? So the Lord's constantly wanting to reveal more and more to us because he loves us so much that he wants to reveal him another part of his nature. The more we stare at that side of him, then all of a sudden we go, oh my gosh, and we're changing a twinkling of an eye. And so for me in the same line um, would be as we got to the Holy Spirit charismatic, I got to a place where I got a revelation of the Father's heart. So I understood at some point the aha moment came, no matter what I did, God loved me. There's a lot of Christians who still don't believe that. They believe they still have to perform or there's hidden messages that we are said, that we say as leaders behind pulpits, and it's a shoulda message. You should be doing this. So you shoulda all over people, right? So you should this, you should that, you don't do this, don't do this. Uh, and so it's more of a, it's like someone trying to chip you into their image almost. So that I got through that place to the point where I, ah, I got the aha moment. Oh my God, I am a son. He loves me unconditionally. The Father loves Mark, no matter what I do. I mean, when I mean no matter what I do, he loves me. And he just basically, he's so simple. He said, look at your own children. Could they ever do anything that would stop you from loving them? Absolutely not. And that's natural father. Imagine a heavenly father that's got that kind of love. But you be believe it or not, there's a lot of Christians who don't believe that. They may, I may even have said it that I believed it, but my actions kind of betrayed me because then I would find myself back into performance trying to do something to get God to like me again. But when I got free from that, it wasn't over for me. I got to the next spot of the timeline where I didn't like myself, but I knew God loved me. A lot of people are at that spot. Yes, I know God loves me. He loves every part of me, but Mark doesn't love himself. Mark's not happy with himself. Mark is 40 years old, and he hasn't arrived to where he should be right now. His friends are doing this in ministry, and they got this job, and these guys are flying to Hawaii, and I, here I am trying to do stuff on Facebook Marketplace just to pull a couple of dollars in. Right? So Mark didn't like Mark. But out of relationship, a guy that came out of the church you're at, the river, is old, an older gentleman named John Kellogg, came into my life. And he sat here on the third row over here. And Todd had called me. He said, man, there's a guy who goes to our church. He's a real sweet guy. He said, just wanted to let you know he's going to be visiting you this Sunday. I said, awesome. So I said, hey, John, would you like to go to lunch? John goes, sure, let's go to lunch. So we went down to the cafe. And, and we're sitting down in uh, the Boardwalk Coffee House. And John begins to start talking to me about the Lord. And he starts sharing with me things um, about the Lord. And he says to me, he says, uh, I said, well, John, right now I'm just going through. You don't really understand what I'm going through because I don't have to, but I know who you are. It actually made me mad. I'm like, you don't know me, dude. This guy, he's 80 years old, you know, sweet man. I'm like, you don't know me. You don't know what I'm going through. He goes, I don't, I don't need to know what you're going through. He says, but I know who you are. And I was like, what in the world? I got frustrated, got up from the table, walked away, he gave my friend Rick a book that he wrote. I get home, and Rick calls me up the next day and goes, did you get his book? It has totally set me free. I'm like, book? He didn't give me no book. <laughs> so I was like, so I called John back up. And I say, like, John, man, you want to go back to lunch again? I probably wasn't in the, oh, sure, Mark. We end up going down to K&W, sit at the table, and John starts opening up again to me. This time, the Lord said, be quiet and receive and when John started speaking to me, it was like I went out of my body almost. We both went somewhere, and it was like Jesus himself started talking to me about the finished work of Christ, about it has been finished on the cross. I've preached it. I've said it. But it became the aha moment on the timeline where I got it because he was carrying it. He owned it so he could give it away. And when he gave it away... <gasps> I got it. And when I got that, I had to get this revel. He said, now, don't go teach this. He said, don't go speak it. He said, don't do anything with it right now. Marinate. Go look in the scriptures and see what the Lord did on the cross. He did not leave any sin back, Mark. 
just for a bad day in case he gets. He took it all. And so he started talking to me about the nature of God in me, and it set me free. I got to a point where I actually started liking myself again. And let me tell you why. Because this one ingredient got subtracted from my world. Condemnation. Totally gone. There's no, therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ. So he took me in Romans 7 where it says the things I want to do, I don't do, but I do anyway, and I'm now condemned for it. But the next verse in verse 8 starts off and says, therefore, now there's no condemnation in Christ. When I caught that, I got so free that I didn't even know what to do with my I was like I was born again, again. And I got to this place where I was like, I actually liked myself. And I knew God loved me. That's a good place to be. I could actually, even Lisa would tell you, I mean, she, same story as you, man. I mean, there's things I wish I could take back that, that anger was there earlier. The frustrations were there. My family got to see me do some of that stuff. You wish you can go back and take it back, but, the God, but God uses all of it. So I remember, and you've heard me say this before, guys, but I remember when Noah jumped up on my lap probably about a year in and he, year into this thing. He said, I like the new daddy. Even your children and people around you begin to start seeing the transformation because revelation is good, but transformation is forever. That's good. That's real good. So I got transformed into this. So the timeline was moving forward. And then after that, I got a chance to meet Stephen and Brad. And, and the next thing you know, we're making a friendship there. Everything started with relationship. And they started bringing in the person of Jesus, just taking it so I didn't camp out in one revelation. I just didn't become a doctrinal person. And then all of a sudden, I found out Jesus is the door. He's the way, the person. Man, we're talking about being liberated again. I'm like, God, what's going to be the next part of your nature you want to show me? Because it's getting real exciting. And now I don't even think about it anymore. I just get up, I go, you walk, you, you enjoy life. I wrote this down this morning. I haven't, um, I want to read it to you because I wrote it down. It's just three statements. This is what I wrote. The more I awaken in my spirit, the less I rely on my soul as a point of reference. The more I awaken to his spirit, the more rest I live in. The more rest I live in, the more activity I experience. Does that make sense? It's actually when you come to a place of rest, you're no longer warring with your soul and your carnal mind always dictating to you, in a place of rest, then all of a sudden you realize that you are seated in heavenly places. And if you're seated in heavenly places, shouldn't you be seeing heavenly things? But because everyone in this room is seated in heavenly places, the only reason we can't see heavenly things is because our soul is still warring or is enmity against our mind, and we're still trying to figure it out through our carnality. But as when we get awakened to the love of God, it was the love that broke in. It was the love that broke into your life and changed you and gave you an opportunity to find the person. It was you and God. And you know what? Thank God for men. There are people along the timeline, I can count on one hand, that, that brought a revelation into my life. But the reality of it is, he would have used a squirrel if he had to. I mean, have you all ever seen nature and all of a sudden God speak to you through nature? He does it all the time. But he chooses to use men that are filled with his love to come to give out um, love to others so that we can complete our, our destiny. We can't do it alone anymore. Listen, this world right now, what we're seeing out there, I'm kind of really getting excited like Stephen said. I promise you, if we have this much chaos in the world right now and craziness going on, how much do you think God is cooking up? Even Lisa and I have been having encounters at the house and I don't like to share a lot of those, and the reason why, because I don't want to take our eyes off of Jesus. But I, I feel like I just should share this particular one. The other night, we were at the house, probably about a, a month ago now, a week after Easter, and all of a sudden, we were in the house. I went to bed, and all of a sudden, I started smelling, it was about 10.30, shrimp just started filling our house up, the smell of shrimp. Like, I don't know why shrimp, maybe it was seafood, but I just, my brain said shrimp. And I'm sitting, and I'm trying to go to bed, and I'm like, who is cooking shrimp at 10.30 at night? And all of a sudden, Lisa comes upstairs into the bedroom. She's like, why does everything smell like shrimp? And I'm like, well, who's, t who's cooking it? She says, no one. She said, the whole house smells like someone is cooking seafood. And I'm like, what in the world? And it was so strong, y'all. It was like in your bedroom, set up, someone set up camp. 
and put a wok in your room and started cooking shrimp in it. And I'm like, what in the world? Lord, what is this? And clear as day, I'm cooking something up for you. Listen, that was for the body. Anytime me, I get something from the Lord, it's for us too a lot of times. It's for us. He's cooking something up. Don't miss the meal when he rings the dinner bell. Don't miss this, guys. This is an opportunity that he's awakening the body of Christ. This is a place we're in right now that if we'll pay attention to what he's doing, if we'll just love one another, go out there and break the barriers of your mind of telling you to stay quiet, sit down, don't do anything, just hide. If you can actually get to the place where you're at moving again, just go out and be kind. You're going to see things happening that you haven't seen. I really believe... Mark, a lot of, me and you talked a little bit that day when you and Todd were there. One of the things he's showing us right now is that if you'll just get up and move, move your feet, put your head up and stop looking down. The next time you go to the grocery store and you say to yourself, I just want to get this product and get out. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to go and get home because my day was so hard. That's because you've been living in your soulless realm for so long, you're drained. But if you'll just pick your head back up and the next time you go to the grocery store and you see that person and that shirt looks good on them and you tell them that, see if a God moment doesn't start to show up. The enemy's even trying to make us stop looking at each other. It's an awakening moment if you just step back out by faith. I'm not telling you to do anything crazy. I'm not talking about trying to go out into a parking lot and just start pulling people out of wheelchairs. I've seen people try and do that and it didn't go over well. I'm talking about just start by being kind and then see if the Lord has the next breadcrumb. If he doesn't, then just be happy with being kind. Does this make sense? So I feel like there is an awakening happening. So if I could say anything to the church today is everyone awaken. No longer is it just leaders. No longer is it just people behind pulpits. Revival will not happen behind a pulpit. It will happen when the body of Christ awakens Every individual in this room begins to hear, see, and be faithful to the simplest things that God asks us to walk out. That is when they will look on the outside and look to us on the inside and say, I want what they've got because of the love that we have for one another. That will be the greatest awakening on this planet. And I believe with all of my heart, the opportunity is sitting right here at our door. Anything you want to share as we're wrapping it up? Yeah, I would just say cre Romans 8 says creation's groaning for the revealing of That's the right. sons of God. That's right. That's us. The creation's groaning for the revealing of Christ within us. It's Christ in us is the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. Right. And as you begin to find the Christ within you, he begins to manifest through you. That's good. I've had two dreams where I've encountered Jesus literally. Both of them, we, me and him became one. He walked inside of me in one of them. Literally walked right inside of me. The whole beginning of the dream, I was getting attacked by spirits. When he walked inside of me, I walked to the same place those spirits were, and they jumped out of the walls with the same face at first, with this hatred and evil. And I've never seen more terror on somebody's face than when they, when I, when he, after he walked into me. They jumped out of the wall thinking they were going to get me. When they looked at me, they realized, and they were terrified. Mm. I'll never forget that dream. And dreams aren't, you know, Solomon, or not Solomon, um, yeah, Solomon. He got wisdom from the Lord in a dream. They're literal encounters. They're literal things. Sometimes it's just our soul projecting things. Sometimes you're going into literal encounters with the Lord. The other one, I got baptized, and when I came out of the water, it was me and him as one. And I started floating up a lava river to the throne of God. I didn't even know that was a thing. It's in Daniel 7 or 9. Christ in us, who we are. We're not this message that you got to believe in Jesus so one day when you die, you go to, you've got to be born from above so the life, the eternal life of God becomes yours now. You live out of the substance of life of Him. You're a brand new creation. We try to talk this way with our kids now. The word saved just means healed, delivered, set free, made whole. It doesn't mean when you die, you go to heaven. That's part of it, but we've made it all about that. It's about being born from above. It's about literally your spirit and his become one. And you're of one nature, one, you're one with it. And, and on that note, 
we're going to pray, and then um, I'm going to open it up just real quick for the last five, five, ten minutes if someone has something they want to jump in that they got out of today. Let's pray. Anybody who would like to pray with us this morning, Mark, if you don't mind, if, if you want to pray, you can since you're awakening. But we want to pray for anyone in this room today that says, you know what? I realize I want to be fully awakened more than ever. I want the awakening of Christ in me. I want to be fully awakened. I want to truly know him. The power of his resurrection, be careful, and the fellowship of his suffering, because that's what it means to be truly awakened. Did you want to pray? Or do you, I don't mind praying. All right. So, Father, we thank you this morning for people in this room. Lord, we thank you that today our cry of our hearts is to be fully awakened in you. To, Lord, to continue to move forward in you, we have ears to hear, our hearts are open. And, Lord, we thank you that we'll be open to people coming into our lives that are supposed to be in our lives, those ones that you have sent that we won't overlook. We thank you, Lord, that the messages that we hear, no matter if they're coming from birds or pulpits, that everything begins to speak of your nature and starts to lift you up, that you be lifted up in my heart again. Lord, I thank you. You remove the dark cloud. You remove every lie. You just break the spirit, Father God, of complacency off of our lives. And, Lord, that we again get to a place where our first love brought us to a place of hunger, of knowing you. So, Lord, I'm asking you this morning for all those that want this, Lord. I just, by faith, I ask you, Lord, awaken us. Fully awaken us, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. We all acknowledge Apart from you, we can do nothing. Awaken family members, sons and daughters. And Lord, if we're the point of contact, so be it. Lord, teach us how to speak words in season and out of season. Lord, break off religious lies, doctrines of men, doctrines of demons from our brains. You're in this room right now. And you are so real. And you so want to take these burdens. So we give them to you. You know, give us the boldness that is needed to do what we hear you say. Give us the humility to walk with people that don't see it the same way we do. Help us believe in others even if we don't agree with them, just like you do with us. your weighty presence keep filling our temples this morning. And by faith as we prayed this morning, bodies that needed healing be healed.
eyes begin to see again. Yes. Yes. Sing over us again, Lord. Let our spirit ears hear the song that you're singing of hope, prosperity, and encouragement. y'all need to start singing again even though you don't think you have a voice to sing and some of y'all need to sing in the spirit again pray in the spirit again just allow the Holy Spirit to start waking you back up again I'm telling you step up step out start trusting again lean not upon your own understanding Acknowledge him in all of your ways. He will make your way straight. How many people feel his presence in here right now? He's so rich right now. So here's what we're going to do. Terry, if you don't mind, keep playing. Guys, if you need to go, it's totally fine. I was going to just do the let us dialogue a little bit. I feel like but the presence of God is in here right now. And if you want to sit for a moment and just let the music minister to you, who am I to tell the Lord to be quiet? So at this, thank you, Mark. I love you, man. And I love you guys so much. Lisa and I are honored to be pastors here.